God damn it. Oh, everything makes me cry. Oh, I probably look really gross now as well because I just cry so much like a drowned rat. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is Courtney J. Welcome back to my channel. It is very nice to have you here. Now today we are reacting to Red, White and Royal Blue. This is so exciting. We are getting another queer story. We have two people who look electric on screen from the trailer. So I'm super excited for this. It's fantastic to see two queer characters coming together who have such amazing chemistry. Now I'm really excited about this. I have not read the book. You guys have told me I should read the book, but I'm watching the film first so it doesn't affect how I think of the film. And then I'm going to read the book and I'll do a video on the comparison of what I think the two are together but I'm super excited to film this reaction now if you guys want to watch this unedited you can do on my patreon you can watch a lot of my reacts over there unedited I have Heartstopper, I have Druk and I have this to come which will be super exciting because we'll have a full movie where we, you can watch the movie and we watch the movie we'll watch it together we'll sit down I've got my popcorn I've got half my popcorn um, I've got my cup of tea because I am British and uh, that's what we do. This is uh, lemon and ginger. I probably should have swallowed the popcorn first. Now I've got soggy popcorn in my mouth, which is really weird. Um, anyway, let's get into this react. If you guys want to support me over there, you can do. You guys are fantastic for supporting me and I love every single one of you. But you guys are waiting for the show, so let's watch Red, White and Royal Blue. Duke of Cambridge married his childhood sweetheart, Lady Martha Fitzroy. Thousands came to cheer the couple and to cheer the prince's younger brother, Prince Henry, known affectionately as Prince of England's Hearts. The wedding reception boasts a who's who of international guests, including Alex Claremont Diaz, the charismatic son of the American president. Oh, okay, so they are both representing um, high officials. What have I seen her in? Okay, you've been yucking my yum all day. What's going on with you? It's the whole Prince Henry comparison thing. Mm. I feel like if I use the wrong fork at dinner, they're just gonna eat me alive. Okay, so there is that like almost class separation, even though he is still like a high official, you know, being the president's son. But I guess royalty's trained to be royalty where he's not. He's just kind of normal. When the revolution happens at the weakness of this wedding. Oh, shut up, Henry. Get into the spirit of this thing. Oh, Henry. Oh, a cake alone costs 75,000 mm? pounds. Jesus Christ. You're not gonna wanna hear this, but that Prince Henry is so yummy. <laughs> I thought she was gonna say yummy. How's it going? So there is definitely no love between them yet. <laughs> that cake is massive. Long time no see. Oh, there's, that, that cake's getting destroyed. You could see it. Killer wedding, man. Glad you're enjoying yourself. You gotta wonder how many. Oh God. Is what this cake costs. Tell me something, Your Majesty. Oh. Yes, Alex. <laughs> did your parents send you to snobbery school, or did looking down on people just come naturally to you? It's rather inevitable. We are the same height. You know what? <gasps> <laughs> so sorry. That's just gonna make it worse. Cake on cake. Oh! <laughs> oh, everyone's starting to look. He's gonna like push him off or something, and he's gonna go flying, isn't he? It'll be fine. Oh! 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 God! Oh! God! Oh! my God! Imagine watching seventy-five grand fall on you like that. Who wants cake? <laughs> right, so they, they are actually gonna be like full on enemies. I sent you to London with some pretty simple instructions. Represent the family at the royal wedding and don't cause an international incident. Henry shoved me. An urge I currently share with the prince. I'm really sorry, mom. I know you are, baby. That's why I need you to fix it. You're flying back to London tonight. You can hate Prince Henry all you want, but the minute you see a camera, you better act like the sun shines out of his ass and you have a vitamin D deficiency. I'm getting out of this. Oh, yeah? What if I set myself on fire? We ship the ashes to Heathrow. <laughs> <laughs> I love the sass. 
Do you want to switch jobs this weekend? No one in the right mind would ever give you a gun. What's the name of Henry's dog? David. I mean, really, who names their dog David? You know I have a shih tzu named Jonathan. Yeah, I still maintain that's weird. That's my son you're talking about. He is super cute. <laughs> you haven't seen some pictures. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I always feel like dog's names should be kind of like less human-y and more like, you know, like fluffy and kind of cute like a dog is. Sean Srivastava, Prince Henry's Aquary. Nice to meet you, Sean. So, what exactly is an aquary? A uh, handle of horses? I am His Royal Highness's personal attendant. <laughs> Through That's the book. question. I'm not the butler, I'm the aquary. And back we go to my original question, what is an aquary? Me. <laughs> You've gotta be joking. Alex, you must stand to the right of His Royal Highness. Is that protocol or just his good side? Both. Wow, they're so, like, rigid, ain't they? Is that the left side? Big smiles for the camera, please. <laughs> My ND is bigger than yours, I want you to know that. <laughs> You're wearing lifts. Not that too, sweetheart. Are we finished here? Yes, Your Royal Highness. Dick. <laughs> hey, Sean, you think maybe I can get a little... You're fine. Whenever you're ready. Oh, no, that would be his right, because I'm looking this way, dumbass. Oh, the first, the first gaze of the eyes. We hit it off instantly. Yep. It's like we've known each other all our lives, right? <laughs> the yep. awkwardness. Alex has very strong opinions and, and he shares them loudly. What three <laughs> words would I use to describe Henry? White, blonde, British. <laughs> what I about Alex is his willingness to admit when he's wrong. Oh, we thrown him in a chokehold there. You don't know this, but he does the best freestyle raps. <laughs> Visit this place a lot? Every couple months. Never with photographers though. Suntel 33. Yeah. Makes sense. What do you mean by that? It means you've got good taste, dogs. Why do you dislike me? Is that his aftershave or his, his shirt he's talking about? Climate conference in Melbourne, first night party. I went to introduce myself to you and you looked at me like I had head lice. Then you turned to your equerry and said, get me out of here. I didn't realize you'd have that. So you do admit that's a douchey thing to say. I could have been nicer. I like how he's calling him out. Because he's all prim and proper, but he's like, kind of like everyday man sort of thing. You couldn't have just been the conference. <laughs> Isn't it? Don't minimize it. I, I, how could I possibly? It's only as minimal as it gets. It has occupied such a vast mental and emotional space okay. in your head. Sure, when you put it like that. But... I mean, but first impressions are everything, so. I was really scared and you could have helped me and you didn't. Aww. You're right. I'm sorry I was a prick to you. I, it's no excuse, but I was a prick to everyone in those days. My father had died a few months before, and the palace insisted on parading me around. For the record, I, I didn't say get me out of here. I said I need to get out of here, which is a different thing entirely. Oh. So it's just a big misunderstanding. Now I feel like I need to apologize. Threat neutralized. <laughs> I like how one conversation's like already started changing everything because, you know, you want to see that, that romance blossom. Hey, Dad. Hey, Mio. I watched your committee hearing on the flight home. Yeah, you and three other people. <sighs> you should be tougher on those agribusiness mofos. What's your beef with him anyway? I mean, he seems like a nice enough guy. He's elite and privileged and lives in a palace. Meanwhile, you're now elite and privileged and live in a palace. I think as poor people, we always like look down on rich people and rich people always look down on poor people in like the same regard because of the, the opposite sort of thing. Like poor people want to be rich. Rich people think that, you know, that like the poor kind of aren't worthy of them in a lot of cases. Hey, Miguel. What's up? ACD slumming it in Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you mind if I put my journalist hat on for a sec? Only if you actually have one of those journalist hats like they do in the old movies. I promise I'll wear it for you sometime. Deberíamos de vernos pronto. Off the record, of course. Mucho, no? Yeah. Well, la escuela ha estado una locura. Yeah, you're always been. running at full speed. Just look at this, it's an encantador. Eso y las pestañas. Ah, I got no subtitles. I should get going. Qué buena birthday, amigo. Lo mismo, Alex. Ah, they, they're literally speaking in Spanish in the subtitles. I only know mi amigo, si, gracias. You always pose with your right hand in your pocket. Are you having? <laughs> Such a British word. Wank. Stick. Nice. So I know nothing about the characters, so I don't know if they're gay or they're bi. Show not just an 
<laughs> I hate the tie you're wearing in boat. It's so boring. What do you have against color anyway? It is a color, thank you. Absolutely have to read Another Country by James Bond. A picture of Dorian Gray. In love in a time of cholera. Also, Madame Bovary. I'm sending you a copy. That Turkeys are freaky, man. Good God, man. They got that weird neck thing. They, they're really scary. This American tradition where the president pardons a turkey before Thanksgiving. I don't understand. Don't you have to commit a crime to be pardoned? Don't look too closely at it. <laughs> they creep me out. I convinced my mother's staff to keep it at the White House, and they put the little asshole in my room. Don't ask mommy for a pet if you can't take care of it. <laughs> Why are you awake? Because some bellend decided to call me at 3 a.m. to talk turkey. What's a bellend? Look it up. I, I wonder how many Americans are watching this are going like, what do all these words mean? In bed with my dog watching Bake Off. Never occurred to me that the royal family watches television. You don't seem like the kind of person that would name their dog David. Well, he's named after Bowie. Wait, seriously? Hmm. It's way cooler. Why not just call him Bowie then? On the nose, don't you think? Have I surprised you in any way? Nope. You are just as <laughs> ghastly as I imagined. <laughs> I kind of love how they're doing this, like they're almost in the same room together, because that's what it's like when you start talking for the first time with someone you like. That's what the big red button's for. There's a little bit of flirtation there. Good night. I used to love that. You'd, you'd be on the phone for like three, four hours and not even realise, talking to like 2am in the morning. <laughs> I wrote a 14 page memo detailing how we can win in Texas next year. I spent weeks working on it. I think it's a viable plan that you should take seriously. <laughs> Please read my memo. Fine. So he's like underappreciated. Alex, I've got the prime minister coming in town next month for a visit. You want to help your mother's campaign? Make sure Prince Henry comes to your party. People like him more than they like you. Well, they wouldn't if they knew him. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That's brutal. You will. Ah, it makes sense that they would have cameras like that because then they probably say, Oh, well, they've got phones. I would, would have thought they would say, like, no phones, and then, like, just give them those sort of cameras so they could still take pictures. Nora, this is my best mate, Pazio Conjo, who has been... I love his suit. ...being me for an introduction since the wedding. Miss Holleran, you are the most exquisite woman I've ever seen in my life. She's in love, Victor! <laughs> She's all over him, and he's got... Kind of eyes for him, hasn't he? Ballroom <laughs> lessons didn't exactly cover this. Listen up! This is the song of my childhood. <laughs> this is the song of my childhood as well. This used to be Need for Speed. Oh, Did he say till the sweat drops down my fall? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> it's kind of cute, like seeing people who obviously never been in that situation handling that situation. I wonder who's going to initiate first with this. <laughs> All the girls want to kiss him. Jesus. Is he going to... Are they just going to kiss? Is he going to kiss him like, as in like a... A jokey gesture? Oh, no. I wonder if they're gonna like go all the way through the whole year and then like the next time they do this he kisses him what are you doing out here wanted to get some air did i do something wrong do you ever wonder who you'd be if you were an anonymous person in the world i was an anonymous working class kid for most of my life and then my mom became president who would you be be a writer live in paris I'd certainly date more <laughs> yeah because it's so hard for a prince to get a date People I date don't interest me, and the people who interest me, I can't date. Oh my god, Henry, I have no idea what you're talking about. Christ, you're as thick as it gets. Oh! And he's kissing back. I'm sorry. I mean, it's quite a beautiful, like, scene to sh show your first kiss, but... Hey, Nora. Hey, what's up? Got a minute? So... Henry kind of kissed me? I totally privately called that. Oh, shut up, Norm. You did not. Hey, it's my job to analyze data, and he has never once checked me out, and I am what some men would consider exquisite. So from where I'm sitting, Henry is... Kind of gay? But he's always dated different girls. Oh, honey, princes aren't allowed to be gay. You should know that. So is... The prince is actually gay, and then he's gonna be bi. Anyway, okay, uh, tell me more about this kiss. Did you like it? I loved it. Grabbed my hair in a way that made me understand the difference between rugby and football. <laughs> that is a yes. I mean, you've been wanting him to dick you down forever. What? <laughs> wow. Dick you down. 
first, you've been like completely obsessed with Henry for years. I've not. Do not interrupt me. You've been long distance text flirting with him all day, every day for months. You uh, spent the entire New Year's party straight up ignoring the who's who of hot young women in order to talk to Henry. She has fully analyzed him there. Just like bang, bang, bang. Objectively, what do you think that means? You're into him. <laughs> You want to get dick down, as she says. I can wrap my head around being low level into guys, but what I'm really confused about is being into Henry. How many guys have you been with? Two. Once in okay. high school and once with Garamos. The political report of her- Shut up! Well, what's that story there? We once made out on the campaign, fully naked, in a hot tub. I get the feeling he wants me back in that hot tub, but you know, he's a journalist. Right, yeah, closeted princes are much safer. So I, I wonder if he's, is he buying the book or is he gay in the book? But I like it how there is two representations in this film as well. Perfect. Also helps that they're both really attractive. Alex, nice tux, que guapo. There we go. Thanks, you too. Oh, I reckon he's gonna end up getting with the, the prince, but then he get, the journalist can get jealous and he's the one who's gonna like reveal it all. Is this the year the Democrats finally flip Texas? Birth to ethics? Yeah, we're uh, gonna flip Texas. I need your help. Where's the threat? I just need to talk to Henry in private. Best I can do is the Red Room. I like how she's always like action first. Look, I know I owe you an explanation. My behavior was. Just kiss him. Just kiss him. Yes. Wait a minute. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Alright fellas, time's up. We gotta get back to- Oh god. <laughs> I knew that was like the worst cover up ever. So are you still like Stonehenge? Your royal hardness? <laughs> or Big Ben? Uh, Hi, Mark. Prime Minister, this is my son, Alex. It's good to see you and his royal highness on better terms and not on the floor. They were almost though. Chappier against walls. <laughs> very excited to be here. We'll, we'll get, get too excited. Tonight, yeah. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. Yes, tell me. You're gonna stay at least 500 feet away from me for the rest of the night. Since we're well, I'm not done. Oh, of course you're not. Then at midnight, you're gonna come to my room on the second floor of the residence where I'm going to do some very bad things to you. Wow. <laughs> well, at least seems up for that. This is gonna get very raunchy, isn't it? I think this is rated as R or A team. I think we're about to see why. To be clear, this changes nothing between us. I'm about to say the same thing. Hey, you went. It's impossible. When did you start to fancy you? Melbourne Climate Conference. Last night party. You had a lot going on that night. <laughs> Tell me about it. I really thought you hated me. I hated how good you looked. <sighs> well, that bit's probably getting really edited down for YouTube. What's that? That's apps. The key to my family's house in Austin. I started wearing it when we moved here. No, I don't. I think I've ever owned a key in my entire life. No such thing as a locked door and you're a prince, I suppose. Well, just to put it out there, I guess you could say I'm... Bisexual? Bisexual. <laughs> Noted. Ah, uh, just to put it out there, I am as gay as a maple. Okay, okay. I'm glad they, like, they, they put like it out there. I have no idea what a maple is either. Maybe that's a bit too British for me. I wouldn't mind doing this again. Me neither. We just have to keep it very casual, of course. Obviously, the press and all. I just can't afford for you to fall in love with me. Okay, oh, oh, no, that's not what I meant when I said- yourself, your majesty. <laughs> it's your royal highness. I don't know how many times I have to tell you that. Gonna be the king of your castle. I should probably get going. There's this Charity Polar Match in Windsor next month that my mate Percy's foundation organizes. I, um, I was wondering if you might wanna be my guest. Say yes. I don't know how to play polo. I suppose that will be all right, seeing as you won't be playing. I will. You'll be watching. Great. That's probably safer for everyone. Yeah, agreed. By the way, a lot of British people don't play polo. It's kind of like a rich person's thing because you do it on horses, don't you? And the, the balls and stuff. Or yeah, I think you have standard polo, which is on the ground. But people don't really play polo over here before that gets taken out of context and everyone thinks British people play polo. We play football. That's mainly our sport. <laughs> and rugby. I get completely different vibes from this film that I do to like, you know, like Heartstopper and stuff. Because Heartstopper's like quite cute and cuddly and like, 
This is, yeah, this feels full on like sexual. A lot of writhing gonna be happening. You hungry? Yeah, I could eat. <laughs> They're just gonna have sex all over the world now, aren't they? There's something I've been dying to ask you. Which are the famous boys that I shagged? There's two things I've been dying to ask. <laughs> all right, let's start with the class. <laughs> Do you have a last name? Actually, I have several. The official family name is Hannibal Stewart. My father's surname was Fox, so my full name is Henry George Edward James Hanover Stewart Fox. Wow. And I thought Alexander Gabriel Claremont Diaz was a mouthful. He is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Does anyone in your family know about you? My sister B is the only one I've told. Grandpa's a cold hard realist. He sat me down on my 18th birthday and told me not to let any selfish desires I might be harboring reflect poorly on the crown. That is some bullshit. Yeah, I agree. It's my life. Doesn't mean you have to accept it. Can he ever belong to someone else? Only momentarily. I, uh, I can see what's going to happen. He's going to want something like more real, and he's going to be reluctant because of the royalty side of him. Which, I think that traditionalist side of stuff does really affect, like, stuff like this. I think we should make love tonight. I'm, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> I mean. We just make love anymore. We're gonna like listen to Lana Del Rey when we do it. All right. <laughs> it's just who's gonna do what? Because I'm, I've never. Oh my god, I am so not playing this cool right now. That's cute. I went to an English boarding school here. Oh wow. In good hands. <laughs> I think that's cute though that they're showing like, you know, people have this assertion that there are roles assigned like, I don't know the the queer community always says like bottoms and tops and stuff, but sex isn't like that. Sex is about talking, communication. <laughs> I think it, it's important to demonstrate that like, I think the most people's visualization of like sex is always through like, like porn and stuff especially a lot of queer people because we don't get enough of this in the media so you know probably everyone thinks that you have to be a certain way when you do this stuff like you have to be really kinky or like uh, but you don't like you can make passionate love any way you want it's quite beautiful like how the, the... is there any part of you that wishes you weren't the son of a president or that your family wasn't in politics I actually wish I could help more. It's gonna be a tough campaign. You really do love it, don't you? Yeah, I really do. They're like polar opposites in that way, aren't they? To devote your life to helping others? To know that what you do has a meaningful impact on people's lives? I know it's my life's work. Is there any part of you that doubts? My father was 12 when my abuela brought him and his sister over from Mexico. You may not understand this, but in America, if you're an immigrant with a Z in your last name, there's not a lot of people in positions of power that look like you or sound like you. Dated. I've been given a chance to be someone in the world that my father didn't see when he was growing up. Which I think is also good that like, you know, they show that he's like, you he know, can't know what that means. Allowing, like, because like, I speak to a lot of people who are struggling with their sexuality. And sometimes that, that's a big part of it. It's like, you know, your culture, your I'm background, your religion, everything plays a part in like you coming out. So seeing characters who are not just white in films, and like, there's nothing wrong with someone being white. It's just that representation is so important. Mr. Claremont Diaz, a student at Georgetown Law, is playing an active role in the campaign's new Texas strategy. I was unaware my campaign had a new Texas strategy. Can you please tell me what it is? If your campaign had read my memo, you'd know. Why aren't you registering a million voters? Why aren't you firing up the youth vote, building a grassroots movement? Why aren't you fighting for your home state, Ma? I am fighting for my administration. You're being idealistic when I need you to be realistic. Is that why you got into politics? To be realistic? I was 28 when I was elected to the state legislature. I had 150,000 constituents. Now I have 330 million. And the thing is, you're not going to be president forever. Like, presidency can only last for eight years, so... What? You were 27, not 28, when you won your first election. Ask any of the women who work for you. They'll be able to tell you that. I like that. I like that he's still standing his ground. Like, he believes in morality and doing what's right. Madam President, do you need me for something? What's the deal with this campaign memo? I read your memo. Good work. 
We're sending you to Texas. Really? You'll have a shoestring budget. You'll eat fast food for every meal. You'll work 18-hour days, and you'll love every minute of it. So what do you say? When do I start? It's hard to put into words how exciting it is to be back here working to get my mom reelected. The only thing that would make it even better is if you were here. I can't think of a single way to start this email except to say you're incredible. But should I also tell you that when we're apart, your body comes back to me in my dreams. I can feel your skin against mine and it makes every bone in my body ache. I'm out here giving my all for my mother. I can't have smut filling my inbox, corrupting my mind and... <laughs> Look, buddy, you know I am incorrigible. So don't encourage me. By the way, we call them trousers, not pants here. Yeah. But in this case, both seem to apply. Actually, it depends what part of England you come from. Oh, there's so much that I want to show you. I want to see your mouth covered in barbecue sauce. And then I want to lick it off. Oh, don't they have napkins in Texas? Here's it's becoming increasingly difficult attending these mindless ribbon cuttings while you're out there changing the world. I miss you. Dear Henry, I'll admit this to you and no one else. For all my big talk and certainty, I'm secretly afraid I'm going to let my mother down. Alex, I understand what you're saying, and I believe what you're describing is called imposter syndrome. But I know that you are not an imposter. Hit a million voters! I'm reminded of one of my favorite quotes from Sense and Sensibility. It isn't what we say or think that defines us, but what we do. And I think that what you're doing is amazing. I really, I really love the companionship. My mom has inspired me every day of my life. She has passed down to me a faith in America that always looks to the future, not back at the past. Her vision for America has you at the center, your hopes, your values, your future. Great speech. Here we go. You look really good up there. Thanks. You know, we're both staying at this hotel tonight. Tell me something. Do you honestly believe that we're ever hooking up again? Well, I don't anymore. <laughs> is there a problem between us, Alex? Yeah. The problem is you sandbagging me and my mother's campaign on your little wannabe Washington Post website, claiming we had a plan to flip Texas. Which you do and have enacted and confirmed as much when we spoke about it on the record. Well, the only thing I'm confirming tonight is that you're an asshole. Feel free to use that quote. What are you doing here? See, I knew this was coming. We need to get up to my room right now. He's gonna do it. He's gonna be a prick, ain't he? Such an ass. Anybody who's queer who is willing to like out people as well are just the worst people because you should know what it's like to come out. Are you ever cook for yourself? Could you see it in his face? Once, unsuccessfully. You ever banged Grinder? <laughs> Once, unsuccessfully. <laughs> Have you ever had your heart broken? The day my dad died. Claremont Diaz, it's almost seven. You have interviews to do, let's get going. Wake up. <laughs> oh, she, she's gonna whoop his ass. You like him? Oh, shit. <laughs> when she sees this, because she's always about like the, the how people view them. That's it. Hi. I'm coming in. Hey, oh. do you mind? <laughs> Hold on, now. Zara. Where is she? Zara, no one is here. Oh. Really? Oh. Well, that no one left her phone. It's not a she. Good morning. <laughs> Penny's about to drop. You need to sit down. <laughs> Don't you tell me what to do. <laughs> do you want to sit? Okay. Where, where, where do you want to go? Here? Yeah. Oh, there? These like one of those paper bags what Americans always have. How long has this been going on? Since New Year's. Oh God, and who knows about this? <laughs> Literally none but you, and the Secret Service. And Percy, wait, and Nora. <laughs> oh, and I told my sister. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, she was really happy. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see her again, she's really- Okay, shut up. Please don't tell my mom. I haven't told her yet. Oh, gee, kid, I'm sorry to interrupt your process of becoming, but you're the one who decided to put your dick into the air to the British throne. Well, technically, I'm the spare. Not talking to you, sir. <laughs> and in the lobby in five minutes so we can get your mother re-elected. I'll be there. And as for you, little Lord Fuckleroy. <laughs> wow. I want you chewing on a goddamn crumpet by sunset, and if anyone sees you leave this hotel, I will Brexit your head from your body. You got me? Man, that woman is fucking crazy. You're royal highness. At least, at least she showed a little bit of respect there. Hey. Do you have a few minutes? Sure, darling. You look very serious. I've met someone. Is that all? Honey, that's great. I mean, why would that be relevant for the campaign? Because she's not a Republican, is she? Oh, that's why. No, she's also a he. He happens to be Henry. Is Mama gonna be very happy? Oh, I'm... We're gonna need some pizza. Oh, So are you, okay. are you gay, bi, fluid, pan? <laughs> what mom and bi? 
It always makes me really and happy you know when the they, like, it's positive. Is not a silent letter. Yes, thank you, Mom. Hmm. Oh, God damn it. Oh, everything makes me cry. <laughs> you need to figure out if you feel forever about him before you take this any further. A relationship like this will define your life. I don't know if we're there yet, Mom. I don't know if Leopard will be. One more thing. We didn't go over this particular type of partner and we had the talk, which is on me for making assumptions. Okay. I just want to make sure you know you need to wear a condom if you're having anal intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> if you're bottoming, then you need the HPV vaccine and I can have HHS send over some brochures. You are ridiculous. I mean, like, two shades of the mom not only being okay with it, but also being okay to go in that depth. I love you. I love you too. Oh, I'm gonna fucking cry again. Well, it just came out to ah. me. <laughs> Watch out, here comes British invasion. It's great to see you again, sir. What's with the sir? Please, call me Congress. Oh, well, in that case, you can call me Royal Highness. <laughs> Who's ready to party? <laughs> I always do get jealous of like American houses and stuff in their films because they're always massive. Imagine just being in a bar and like you're watching like the prince get wrecked and the president's son get wrecked. No, I am definitely not doing karaoke. I'm burning. You are definitely. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Now, this, this, is where they this is why they call me Mr. Fahrenheit. Super psych man out of you. He's falling head over heels, isn't he? My cat's eating the popcorn. <laughs> so you like him? What's not to like? I wasn't sure if you needed to have like a Catholic moment about it. Or... Please. Have a little more faith in your old man. You are after all talking to the patron saint of gender neutral bathrooms in Austin, you little shit. <laughs> your mom and I were a stupid idea too. Nobody thought we'd make it. Look at us now. Full respect to the dad. Sometimes you just gotta jump. Hope you're not standing on the cliff. I love that. I love seeing like there's no like pain or suffering with him coming out. He's just come out, both his parents are fully accepting. That's amazing to see as well, because we always get that drama with people coming out in these sort of things, and they very rarely show like, just full on acceptance. What's such a cretin. No, get off. <laughs> oh. I've been thinking. I seriously doubt that. I seriously doubt that. <laughs> I've been thinking about how my life is gonna be a lot different after the election. Maybe next summer we could come back here for like a couple weeks. We could be naked, have sex anywhere on the property you want. We could walk through Austin holding hands and it won't even matter if anyone sees us. It will because he's still not out. Take you around to all the places I grew up. You can get to understand my life a little more. I've never felt this way about anyone. It's getting a bit more real for him, isn't it? It's like there's a rope attached to my chest and it keeps pulling me towards you. I feel so right. What I mean to say is, Henry, I'm... He just got so nervous, didn't he? Like, this is almost a metaphor, but he feels like he's underwater. Henry! He's gotta give him time. So I think, like, obviously, he's worked through everything really fast. But Henry is still processing it because it, it you know, he knows it's probably not going to be as accepting. It's probably not going to be as okay. But you know, it could be different, it could, it could come out, but you know, it, it's probably going to have some issues. I really hope it gets sorted though, because like, they make such a cute couple as well. I ended things with Alex. Oh, hell. I mean, you didn't, you just left him. I felt myself getting too close and I didn't want to break his heart. What about your heart? He's going to be absolutely miserable, isn't he? You won't answer my texts or take any of my calls. Percy said that Henry sometimes goes into his cocoon phases and the only thing to do is just wait it out. Can't wait it out. I'm going crazy here. Well, you have air miles. Go to London. Get your man. She's got a point. What if he won't see me? And you keep fighting. Prove that you want to be at his side. Sir, so, Mr. Claremont Diaz is at the gate. I find it horrible to live in, like, houses that size. Like, they just feel empty all the time. 
What's going on, Henry? I think you at least owe me an explanation. I have done nothing but explain myself to you this past year. You won't talk to me. All I know is I'm the one here willing to fight for us. Because it costs you nothing! I have been losing my mind this week because the man I love has vanished from my life without an explanation. Is it a love? I flew across an ocean. I stormed a fucking castle to look you in the eye and tell you that I love you knowing that you wouldn't say it back. So no, Henry. In fact, this is costing me everything, and if this is over, I at least deserve to know why. Oh, for Christ's sake, Alex, for once, I wish you could see me for who I am and not who you want me to be. I'm not like you. I can't afford to be reckless. I have centuries of history bearing down on my shoulders. My life is the crown, and yours is politics, and I will not trade one prison for another. I can love you and still not want that life. He just wants to be a normal person. It makes me a man with some infinitesimal shred of self-preservation and you don't get to come in here and call me a coward for it. I would never call you a coward. We can figure out a way to love each other on our own terms, no one else's. That is simply not possible and you know it. I'll leave. And you can live in your tower and protect your heart for the rest of your life and nothing will ever happen to you. But Henry, nothing will ever happen to you. So if you want me to go, you have to tell me to leave. Please don't make me. Because I would never leave this room if I didn't think there was any hope of holding on to the happiness that I found with you. So tell me to go, Henry, and I promise I will walk out that door and trouble you no longer. There's something I want you to see. I just want him to be happy. <laughs> like, <sighs> just like run away, elope. You know, just be two guys living that love life. When I was a boy, my father used to bring me here early in the morning before the museum opened. How I like to come at night, in here, at night. No one else is around to gawk at you or try and take your picture. You can slip between the statues like a shadow. When I was younger, I would dream of taking somebody I loved here, and he'd love it as much as I did. We dance right here amidst all these statues, just a dark few acid fantasy. That's it. I have nothing to say but just tears of happiness. It's really beautiful. Oh, I probably look really gross now as well because I just cry so much like a drowned rat. <laughs> Please be patient with me, and I promise I will try and be brave for us. Because when we write the history of my life, I want to include you in my love for you. History, huh? Bet we can make some. Amazing. I want you to have some part of me until you can have all of me again. Now we're even. I love you. I'll be as patient as you need. What's going on? Where's the grandpa? Your emails to Alex have been hacked. They were posted overnight to Reddit. The mayor and the son ran them this morning. I bet it's that... that... Oh, no. All of them. Oh, I'm so sorry, Henry. I need to call him. I'm afraid you can't, sir. You can't do this. Orders from the palace, sir. No, I give the orders in this palace! These orders are from Buckingham Palace, sir. C can we at least get a message to him? Um... The emails, which the mirror is calling the Waterloo Letters, details the romance of... <sighs> It would be like the two worst newspapers who'd run that as well. Just scum. Now we have Miguel Ramos of Politico, who was the first American journalist to break this story and who has written extensively about it in the week since the leak. Scumbag. You absolute asshole. I'm curious, Miguel. These emails were posted to Reddit at 11.54 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday night. I'm not sure what you're getting at. Are you really that quick? Or did you perhaps have advanced knowledge that this leak was going to happen? He's the one who leaked it. What a scumbag. Anybody who does that to anybody, like forcing someone to come out in that way. Henry and I have been together since the beginning of this year. As many of you have already read, we've struggled every day with what this means for our families, our countries, and our futures. And while neither of us is naive about what it means to be public figures, we never imagined our most private and intimate thoughts, fears, and truths would become fodder for public examination. What was taken from us this week was our right to determine for ourselves how and when we should share our relationship and queer identities with the world. The truth is, every queer person has the right to come out on their own terms and on their exactly. own timeline. They also have the right to choose not to come out at all. This isn't about shame. This is about privacy. 
and the fundamental right of self-determination, which are exactly the principles on which the struggle for queer liberation has always been fought. I fell in love with a person who happens to be a man, and that man happens to be a prince. He has captured my heart and made my life immeasurably better. I love His Royal Highness, Prince Henry George, Edward James, Hanover Stewart Fox. I hope one day we'll have the opportunity to be public about our relationship on our own terms. Great job. I'm proud of you. I feel I'm watching. Kind of shows how much that there is still to fight for, that this could be like a reality. Oh God, I miss him. Oh my God. <laughs> I've got the first son in my office moving over the prince like a cow in labor, and I'm not gonna get any work done until you put these two lovesick homosexuals on the phone with one another. I don't care what any of those wrinkled white men at Buckingham Palace have to say about it. I want you to march your skinny, perfect ass over to the prince, hand him your phone, or so help me God, you will never see me make it again. Wait, Ooh, what? <laughs> Sorry, I could kiss you. Touch me and die. She is so vicious, but like, <laughs> caring at the same time. Hello? Hey, B. Alex. Oh my god, are, are you alright? I'm hanging in there. Are you okay? No, no, I'm not okay. You know what? I'm coming to London tonight. I'll figure this out. Hurry. Please. Oh, god damn it, this film, man! <sighs> <laughs> King or Queen, however you wanna. Have you heard from your grandfather yet? Not a word. Part of me wonders if their entire strategy is to deny I ever existed. Can't keep you locked away forever. We really need to get you a book on English history. I feel so lost right now. They used to call me the Prince of England's heart, and now it feels like everyone hates me. Hey, they still love you. They love the idea of me. And now they are faced with the reality. That you're an amazing person who has an amazing boyfriend. You're also a prince. You're very charming. You're very good looking. And you're very brave. Boyfriend. I'm always proud to be your boyfriend. Oh, sorry, I'm white and upper class, so my affection comes with strings. <laughs> oh, speaking of boyfriends on strings. You'll never guess who Sean is dating. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. The king wishes to see you. It's gonna be very awkward. Either the king is gonna be like, no, or it's okay. You know, it's not too late to get out of here and fly the Maldives. Tempting. The less you say, the better it'll be for you. Oh, shut up. You don't need your advice, Philip. Ah. Oh. business. There are a number of unscrupulous governments who routinely concoct wholesale fabrications about prominent people in order to further their own national interests. I wonder, Henry, do you suppose that might explain these unseemly reports? Nope. It's all true, Grandpa. I have directed palace communications to issue a firm denial of these accusations. They are not Accusations, they are the truth. Truth from which I am determined to protect you. I want your protection. I want your support. It is not yours to decide. I'm as much a part of this family as anyone here, and I deserve to be happy. But to throw away your future because of one mad in fact. Oh, shut up, you sniveling little twat. Have you read our emails, Philip? God, no. Alex and I love each other deeply. I have read your emails, Henry. They leave no doubt that your love is genuine. Occasionally vulgar, but genuine. <laughs> However, your primary responsibility is not to your heart, but to your country. And anything other than maintaining the traditional royal image is out of the question. Why is it out of the question? Mr. Clermont Diaz, let me disabuse you of the idea that your contribution to this conversation is in any way welcome. Oh, shut up. I'll ask it then. Why must we maintain a traditional royal image? Because, because... You ain't got no answer. Because the nation simply will not accept a prince who is... Gay. Yes, Tommy, what is it? Well, how many people? <coughs> That's settled, then. What's going on outside? Queer is here. Look at this. Henry B. Apparently there are crowds forming in Manchester, Sheffield, Birmingham, Cardiff, Edinburgh and Liverpool. 
I will no longer be the prince of shame and of secrets. Starting today, the world will know me for who I am. You can't go out there. Yes, they can. Grandpa, tell them that they can't go out there. Henry! Oh, shut up, you little rat. Are you sure this is what you want? There is no turning back if you go out there now. I certainly hope not. I love you. I love you more. I think that's up for debate. The entire race now hangs on Texas. I'll breathe on I'll breathe and we win. Claremont. It's all gonna come down to Texas. Whoever wins Texas is gonna win the White House. It's about the country we hope to lead to our children. I think my mom's working on her concession speech. You fought hard, and it isn't over yet. You still haven't noticed my tie. Yellow roses. I read it was a thing in Texas. I thought it might bring you some luck. I'm so grateful you're here. President Ellen Clement oh. has been re-elected. Well of wins. <laughs> There are people who will tell you that elections don't matter. But try telling that to the auto worker in Michigan who worries whether or not their plant will be shut down. Tell that to the transgender high school student in Mississippi voting for the very first time. Elections do matter because they give you a voice. And your voice is blended tonight with the voices of millions of Americans just like you. Open hearted. Fearless and alive to a bolder, brighter, braver future. What do we do now? Do you still have my key on you? Feels like so much has happened in this film. They, like condense such a like intense love story into just a couple of hours. It's crazy. We won. We won. After you. Wow, you really are working class, aren't you? <laughs> Do you want me to give you a tour of the house? Yes. Lead the way, darling. All right, so I think my first step is So everybody, that was the whole of Red, White and Royal Blue. And oh my God, I, I've cried so much during that. It was amazing. I, I really enjoyed that movie. I'm looking forward to reading the book because I think the book's going to give a lot more context as well. I, like you, They'll go more into depth about their relationship, probably a few more of their back and forths and stuff. But... That was amazing. Um, I can't believe how emotional I got through that. When it first started up, I was like, oh, this is going to just be happy and bouncy. But then full on drama hits and it's just, yeah, I, it's just very beautiful. The context of how they took coming out as an experience and showing it from different places. And yeah, it's it's the nice version of uh, Young Grills, I guess. Um, it, it's really good. I really enjoyed it. I, I love the characters. I love... I, I just love it as a whole. It's great. It's fantastic. It, it's definitely up there with my top five queer movies up there with Love, Simon, which I think is my top queer movie. But that was brilliant. And I look thoroughly to uh, reading the book. If you liked this reaction, please give it a massive thumbs up and give it a share as well, because it helps me out a lot. If you want to watch it been edited, go on to my Patreon. What was your favourite moment? What is your favourite moment in the books? Uh, who's your favourite character? Um, did they do the book justice? That's why I want to know from the people who've read the book. Do you think that the film was a worthy equivalent? Or do you think that it needed more? Should it be made into a series rather than a movie? Obviously, just taking it at face value, I thought the movie was brilliant. And I really enjoyed it. I thought the chemistry between the two of them was exceptional. I felt like... that. I felt like they were in love. Like, I felt like they were in love. And like, when the acting's that good, it, it's just amazing. I loved how they kind of showed British culture and American culture and clashed it together, even to the point where Americans are like, what the hell does that mean? And we're like, oh, yeah, you just went Gaelic. You're not, you're not British. And, like, obviously British people not understanding American tropes as well. So, yeah, it was amazing. I really enjoyed it. Um, so... All I can say is I will give that film a solid 9 out of 10. Um, I just wish that the, some of the other characters got a bit more development, but there's only so much you can do in a film about making it like three or four hours long. I am going to say love, peace, and secrets. Thank you for watching, and you can check out my Heart's Love Reacts and any other reactions. Goodbye.